Glycogen uh, is a polysaccharide, a homopolysaccharide that is stored in the liver, muscles and uh, kidneys. Now, uh, liver glycogen uh, percentage wise, that means the grams of uh, glycogen stored uh, per liver is uh, more than uh, that of muscle, uh, whereas in the muscles there is um, uh, less uh, percentage of uh, glycogen stored uh, per uh, muscle tissue. Uh, but as the muscle uh, is widely distributed and the muscle mass is uh, quite larger than the uh, liver, the total uh, glycogen stored in the muscles uh, in comparison to liver is uh, much higher. The function of uh, muscle glycogen is to uh, provide uh, glucose units for the production of uh, ATPs for the uh, working of the muscles, whether it is skeletal muscle. Um, yeah. So now in the case of uh, liver glycogen, the uh, liver glycogen mainly contributes to the uh, glucose level in the blood in the fasting state. Now in a well-fed uh, state, the uh, glycogen uh, synthesis uh, takes place. That means the excess amount of uh, glucose is um, converted to glycogen, the polysaccharide, and stored uh, in the liver. Now, um, so the, the, this process is known as glycogenesis. Now, in the fasting state, the uh, glycogen that is stored is uh, uh, broken down, and uh, what we get is the glucose and this process is known as glycogenolysis. Now let's uh, uh, see something about the uh, glycogenolysis. Now uh, glycogenolysis is the process of breakdown of uh, glycogen and uh, the enzyme uh, that is uh, the rate limiting enzyme of this pathway is known as uh, glycogen phosphorylase. Now glycogen phosphorylase exists in uh, two states, the active state and the uh, inactive state. Now the uh, inactive uh, glycogen phosphorylase can be converted to the active uh, glycogen phosphorylase with the help of uh, another enzyme known as uh, glycogen phosphorylase kinase. Now this glycogen phosphorylase kinase also exists in uh, inactive and active form and uh, the inactive form of uh, phosphorylase kinase is converted to active form uh, of, of uh, phosphorylase uh, kinase with the help of uh, cyclic AMP dependent protein uh, kinase. Now, uh, during the fasting state, when the glucagon and the epinephrine uh, concentration shows an increase, uh, the uh, epinephrine and uh, the glucagon binds to the beta adrenergic receptors and uh, this will activate uh, an enzyme known as uh, adenylate cyclase. Now adenylate cyclase is uh, converting the adenosine triphosphate into cyclic 3-5-AMP. Now this uh, cyclic 3-5-AMP acts as an uh, intracellular uh, signal of uh, uh, extracellular events. Now the cyclic AMP dependent uh, protein kinase is an enzyme of wide specificity that is it can act on uh, a variety of um, uh, substrates which are actually enzymes. Cyclic AMP dependent protein kinase uh, can uh, act on uh, uh, glycogen synthase and uh, uh, add uh, phosphate to the serine and uh, threonine residues of glycogen synthase thereby making the glycogen synthase enzyme uh, inactive. Whereas the cyclic AMP dependent uh, protein kinase can also phosphorylate uh, phosphorylase kinase and also for phosph uh, glycogen phosphorylase uh, in both instances uh, making these enzymes uh, active. So the, uh, by the process of phosphorylation some enzymes are made uh, inactive and uh, some other enzymes are made uh, uh, active. So good examples can be seen in the process known as glycogen synthesis and uh, glycogen uh, breakdown. Now, this cyclic AMP dependent uh, protein kinase um, uh, activates uh, phosphorylase kinase 
and phosphorylase kinase further uh, activates the glycogen uh, phosphorylase. Now, in this uh, in this way, the glycogen uh, breakdown or the glycogenolysis is um, uh, brought about. Now, uh, um, the glycogen phosphorylase uh, acts on the uh, glycogen molecule uh, and uh, produces glucose one uh, phosphate. One point glucose uh, one phosphate is uh, removed and uh, from uh, by acting on the alpha one four uh, glycoside linkages and in this manner the glucose one phosphate uh, is produced. Now this glucose one phosphate is uh, further converted to glucose six phosphate with the help of uh, phosphoglucobutase. And uh, now glucose 6 phosphatase acts on glucose 6 phosphate to give uh, uh, free glucose. Now, in this manner, free glucose is generated um, from the glycogen. This is happening in the liver, whereas in the muscles, uh, till the formation of uh, glycogen uh, glucose 6 phosphate, the pathway is the same, but uh, the muscles lack the glucose 6 phosphatase enzyme, and so glucose 6 phosphate cannot be converted to glucose and so the glucose cannot uh, enter the uh, blood uh, from the muscle whereas this glucose 6 phosphate continues to continues in the glycolytic pathway and provides the necessary energy for the muscle activities now uh, glycogen phosphorylase will go on acting uh, hydrolyzing the 1,4 uh, glycosidic linkages thereby liberating uh, glucose 1-phosphate but uh, when it is nearing a branch point of 1,6 uh, glycosidic linkage uh, about uh, uh, 3 uh, glucose res residues uh, remain and uh, this uh, uh, trisaccharide moiety uh, will be uh, rather uh, transferred with the help of uh, glucan transferase to uh, another uh, point uh, of the glycogen primer but in the alpha 1,4 glycosidic linkage. Now uh, the uh, branch point uh, that is the alpha 1,6 glycosidic uh, bond is exposed by the transport uh, of uh, this trisaccharide unit and now the uh, debranching enzyme can easily act and hydrolyze uh, this uh, branch point. Then the uh, glycogen phosphorylase will uh, continue with its uh, reaction. Then again uh, it might uh, approach a, a branch point where there is a 1,6 uh, glycosidic linkage. The same process will be repeated, uh, that, that of uh, glucan transferase and also debranching enzyme and uh, glycogen phosphorylase can continue its action. So this is uh, what is known as uh, glycogenolysis and this takes place in the fasting state. Now, uh, uh, during fasting, the glucose uh, can be provided from the liver glycogen uh, for about uh, 18 hours. But uh, after 18 hours, there is uh, very little glycogen left in the liver and the body will have to uh, look forward to gluconeogenesis, uh, that is the formation of glucose from uh, non-carbohydrate sources like amino acids, uh, lactic, uh, and uh, glycerol to provide uh, glucose units because the glucose is an essential uh, fuel in the brain and uh, RBC so uh, glucose uh, supply is should be readily available to these uh, tissues uh, so that's about the uh, glycogenolysis now uh, glycogenesis that is the synthesis of uh, glycogen now uh, glycogen uh, synthesis takes place with the help of uh, three enzymes that is a uh, glycogen uh, synthase then again a glucan transferase and a branching enzyme now glycogen synthase uh, requires udp glucose uh, then a, a glycogen uh, primer which is uh, actually a small molecule of glycogen uh, and it is also known as glycogenin and to this uh, glycogen primer uh, glucose units are added uh, from uh, uridine diphosphoglucose uh, unit that is uh, UDP glucose. Now uh, UDP glucose uh, donates the glucose necessary for the 
lengthening of the glycogen uh, primer. A series of um, reactions uh, go on so that more and more uh, glucose units are uh, added. Uh, this also requires uh, pyridoxal uh, phosphate, the co coenzyme. Now, in the uh, next uh, reaction, the, again, you know, this uh, glycogen synthase goes on adding the glucose units in the alpha 1 4 glycosidic uh, linkage to form a linear molecule. But uh, the glycogen has to form some branch points, that is, at the branch points, there will be alpha 1 6 glycosidase. Now, uh, at uh, 3 uh, glucose unit, that means a tri trisaccharide unit is uh, transferred uh, from the uh, present position to another chain uh, but at a alpha 1 6 uh, glycosidic uh, linkage. Now uh, with this the branch point is established and uh, further lengthening of the uh, glycogen molecule can take place with the help of uh, glycogen synthase uh, enzyme. Now in this manner a highly branched uh, molecule of uh, glycogen uh, can be synthesized. Now, the, again, the cyclic AMP level uh, regulates the uh, glycogen synthesis also on one side and uh, glycogen breakdown on the other side. Now, uh, as I told you, glycogen synthase uh, becomes uh, inactive uh, due to the phosphorylation, uh, whereas uh, if we remove the phosphate from glycogen synthase, then it becomes uh, active. So, um, that means the glycogen uh, synthase and glycogen phosphorylase are reversibly uh, activated or inactivated uh, by the cyclic AMP dependent uh, protein <coughs> kinase. Now, um, the, the, the phosphorylation or the dephosphorylation uh, of these enzymes takes place on the serine and uh, uh, the hydroxyl group containing amino acid that is serine and uh, uh, threonine. Now, uh, another thing is that, uh, so uh, glycogen synthase kinase uh, is required for this. Now, if glycogen synthase kinase acts on the glycogen synthase molecule, uh, it acts phosphate and so makes the, makes the enzyme uh, inactive. Now, if you want to make the uh, glycogen synthase uh, active, then uh, you have to remove the phosphate and that is done by protein phosphatase uh, 1. Now, protein phosphatase 1 uh, is inhibited by uh, cyclic AMP, but uh, uh, you know, uh, it is activated by uh, insulin. Now, uh, uh, cyclic AMP uh, can be destroyed uh, by a protein, uh, by a phosphodiesterase enzyme, by a phosphodiesterase enzyme, so that cyclic 3-5 AMP is converted to a simple uh, AMP. Now, uh, with the losing of the uh, function of cyclic AMP. Now, this enzyme is activated by insulin. So, hence, insulin is uh, responsible uh, for the uh, increase of uh, uh, glycogen uh, synthesis, uh, but uh, decrease of the uh, glycogen uh, breakdown. Now, uh, another important uh, point here is that uh, glycogen metabolism is um, uh, very important in the uh, regulation of uh, blood glucose level. Now, there are some abnormalities uh, in the glycogen storage disease, uh, that is the uh, uh, known as glycogen storage disease. That is, uh, type 1 is known as the von Jacks disease, where there is a deficiency of glucose 6-phosphatase enzyme. Now, this enzyme is the last enzyme in the glycogenolysis, so if this enzyme is absent, the uh, glucose cannot be entering the uh, blood from the liver and hence there is a tendency towards um, hypoglycemia. So although glycogen uh, level is very high in the liver, but uh, the, that uh, glucose cannot be utilized uh, in the blood because uh, of the lack of glucose 6-phosphatase enzyme. So if this is absent, it is known as von Jacks disease. Now, uh, glucose 6-phosphatase deficiency also can lead to uh, hyperuricemia because then this glucose 6-phosphate, as it cannot be converted to glucose 6-phosphate, uh, glucose, free glucose, um, it will be diverted to HMP shunt pathway uh, with the liberation of uh, ribose 5-phosphate 
which goes for the synthesis of uh, excess amount of purines and this excess amount of purines can be catabolized to uric acid uh, causing uh, gouty arthritis that is the primary one of the primary uh, gouty uh, conditions so uh, this is again happening now there are uh, other uh, glycogen st storage diseases like uh, pompe's disease is another one mccardell disease is another one uh, and um, in some you know the, the branching enzyme is uh, absent in some other people the debranching enzyme is absent so abnormal amount or abnormal type of glycogen uh, is stored um, in the liver and muscle so uh, because as these glycogen cannot be utilized then uh, this leads to glycogen storage uh, disease okay.